Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It's me, Biola Labi. I'm Veronica Odeka. And I'm Tundra Biola. The problems associated with child marriage have been engaging the minds of human rights activists for a long time. There has been concerted efforts by advocates of women's rights to initiate a more comprehensive set of sanctions against offenses like violation of minors and trafficking of girls for the purpose of prostitution. Bureaucratic bottlenecks and reluctance on the part of politicians, however, continue to be a problem. But now things may get more interesting with the involvement of three teenage girls who are determined not to rest until child marriage is outlawed in Nigeria. 15-year-old Kudarat Abiola, a granddaughter of the late Chief MKO Abiola, the acclaimed winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Temitayo Asuni, who is also 15, and Suzanne Ubogo, who is 16. All of them are students. Welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you. Good, good, morning. Morning. good morning. Good morning. So good to see you, ladies. Good to see you. Good to see you. So I wanted to start off by actually defining child marriage. What exactly is it? Could okay. you? So child marriage is an act when you, um, when individuals under the age of 18 are forced into marriage. So, um, Tim, if I want to ask you, how did you guys sort of come together and start to work on this um, project? Actually, met at a at a career workshop mm -hmm. over last over the winter. That was last year, and then we were working on the SDG goals, mm -hmm. and then we saw gender equality, mm -hmm. and we saw that Nigeria was the third highest, um, has the third highest rate of child marriage in Africa, eleventh in the world. Yes. And we we're like, wow, why is that actually occurring? And then we we went deep into the issue and we found out that, okay, in, it's a constitutional problem. Mm -hmm. That is a constitutional loophole, which I won't tell you about. So um, as we were digging deep into the problem, we found that um, a specific section in the Constitution, um, Section 29, 4B, is where, the, is where the root of the issue is. Because that um, specific section of the Constitution says that any woman who is married is deemed to be of full age, meaning that if an 11-year-old girl is married, she's deemed to be an adult. So um, we, we did more research and we found that in 2003, Nigeria passed the Child's Rights Act in accordance with the Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. And Section 21 of that um, says that um, any person, no person under the age of 18 is capable of contracting a valid marriage. And if a marriage, and if a marriage is so conducted, it is to be declared null and void mm -hmm. and of no effect whatsoever. The problem now is, is that in Article 1, Subsection 3 of the Nigerian Constitution, it says that... Um, and any law that is inconsistent with the provisions of this constitution is to be declared void and of no effect, mm. meaning that art, um, set Article 21 of the Child's Rights Act has no effect because um, to, Section 29 4B is in the constitution. It, it holds more weight than the Child's Rights Act. Mm. Considering the fact that these victims of child marriage, like their age, so we decided we needed to do something about it. They suffer so many problems mm -hmm. from VDF to depression mm -hmm. to suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then it does not only affect the victims, but then the country as a whole. Because each year, over 40 million young girls are forced into child marriages. Mm -hmm. So imagine if Nigeria had 40 million more girls, like in the workforce, who will have a faster development mm -hmm. yes. rate mm -hmm. and economic growth. So we decided to do something about it. And we decided that the best way to go about solving this problem is by raising awareness. So we created a petition mm -hmm. to raise awareness and also to influence lawmakers to amend that section of the Constitution. We also decided to come together and create a non-for-profit called It's Never Your Fault. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's what we're seeing on your show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So okay. we chose the name It's Never Your Fault because like most times when girls are, like when a social injustice such as rape or child marriage happens to a girl, Society blames her, like, oh, why were you out at that time of the night? Or your dress was too short. Mm -hmm. And then, it, like, society stigmatizes her, which gives her, like, low self-esteem, low self-confidence. I am so excited right now. I feel yeah. like I'm in school. I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like, in school. school. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm probably going to get out of body experience. <laughs> I can see. I was like, I'm going to cry. But please, 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 please. Okay, so we're trying to pass a message and dedicate the name. It's never your fault to them that whatever happens, it's never their fault. We'll try and help them change the mentality of the society and get them back to 
how they were before. Okay. Because people might just be tuning in and they don't know how old you ladies are, so just please tell us again how old each one of you are. And your name. Okay. And your name. So my name is Kudira Tabiola. Mm -hmm. When we started last December, I was 15, mm -hmm. but then I turned 16 this year, March. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Thank my you. name is Susan Abogu, <laughs> and when we started, I was 16, but I'm 17 now. Yes. Yeah, my name is Simsa Asuni. When we started, I was 15, but now I'm 16. So, you, ladies, this is really important because I know, I think it was in 2016, the United Nations also had an initiative such as this to kind of end it by the year 2030. And we're talking about young ladies such as yourself at this age mm. that could be um, given to marriage at a young age yes. without having the rights to education and to be educated. So not only, who, who are you, who is the message for? Because not only necessarily, the problem doesn't just start with the young ladies or with, with young men, but it's bigger than that. So who is this message for? Who should be paying attention and who helps to make this decision about young ladies being sold into um, child marriage? So what we're focusing on right now is changing the constitution. Mm -hmm. So our mess, I'm ending the constitution. Yes. So our message is towards the House of Senators, mm -hmm. the President, mm -hmm. the, the lawmakers, government. the federal government, the people with the power to change, to amend the law and, yeah. That's... We also have social media accounts on Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter where we post content about the negative effects of child marriage mm -hmm. and we try and discourage people from taking part in the act mm -hmm. because a lot of people that um, participate in child marriage, they might be uneducated and mm -hmm. they don't know like how serious the issue is. And then because like Nigeria has like a lot of other problems, like um, the economy and mm -hmm. things like that. So people may feel that this is not a serious issue. Mm -hmm. So we have social media accounts where we try and post to show them how serious the problem is. We're also running an online campaign with the hashtag Raise the Age mm -hmm. and Section 29.4B to enlighten the public on how serious the matter is. Yeah, so and that ignorance that... won't be an excuse. So nobody can come and be like, oh, I wasn't aware of that mm -hmm. and stuff. So mm -hmm. they would know that what they're doing is actually wrong, even mm -hmm. though the Constitution is saying that it's not a crime. Mm -hmm. But it is a crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and even though certain cultures allow it, yes. people yeah. need to realize that those cultures need to die. Yes. Yes. Can we have a look at the backs of your t-shirts? Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. Okay. okay. Um, so these are the hashtags, yes, raise the age and section 29.4b. All right, so we should all be using section 29.4b to raise yes. awareness. It's never and your fault. It's never it's your fault. fault. So everyone, please follow. It's never your fault and use that hashtag. How can we be part of the solution? How can every adult in Nigeria be part of the solution? Okay, so the simplest way you can help us right now is to sign our petition mm -hmm. on change.org. Um, to follow us, to, to help raise awareness and to help get the word out there. And also, like, I think in everyday interactions, uh, just be knowledgeable, be able to, uh, be, able to um, be able to educate people that um, this behavior is wrong and it needs to be changed. I think that's the way you can help us at this point in time. Okay? Yeah. So, guys, the, um, everyone at home, please go to change.org and sign the petition. How many signatures do you need? Um, um, right now, we have over 140,000 signatures. Well, we and we're just more aiming to get as many signatures because as possible. Because the, the more signatures we, we have, have, the stronger our, pe our, our cases. Will be. So when we finally get someone to draft it to the National the Assembly. Assembly. And what are your social media handles? Um, um, at it's never your fault on Instagram and at never your fault on underscore Twitter. on Twitter. Twitter. Wow. So, what's I mean? What do you ladies want to be when you grow up? I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I already <laughs> know. I know. I have a feeling that I know what some of you. But I want to start with you. What do you? What do you Me? Yes, yes, well, yes, yes. in the future, I am thinking towards like medicine okay. or maybe tech. But Actually, then, they've told us not to ask kids what they want to do when they grow up. They've asked you, what are the things that you want to pursue? What are you going to be passionate about? What are your passion projects? As okay, you my up? passion. As I grow up, my passion will be towards well. Generally, just correcting social injustice. Mm, yes. Any social injustice I see that I can actually affect, that I can actually change, I can change, I will change it. And just like doing what I love for the betterment of everybody. Yes. And Susan? So um, I'm really passionate about technology. So I was thinking, um, what I want, I'm really passionate about technology and like bridging the gap between the, 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 the poorest of the nation and the richest of the nation. So I was, I'm, I, I want to use technology to find a way to bridge that gap and to help make the world a better place, as cheesy as that might sound. <laughs> no, it's not, not cheesy at all. all. Please, not never say that. It's not cheesy at all. And I, you're already doing a, quite a bit yes. of stuff in coding yes. now. Um, and you're building some programs. I'm the apps. CEO of my own software engineering company, and I founded it when I was 13. 
I created two games when I was 13, right, and right now I make websites for people, logos, um, letterheads, anything. I need your card. <laughs> She's a, this is a boss lady. Yes. I need some logos made, so I will be calling you. And can you do you? Well, I'm passionate about teaching and diplomacy yes. because I would like to be like at the forefront of solving the world's problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm passionate about like teaching. I would like to have like um, an organization where I can teach girls and mentor girls and teach them that they can be more than what society expects them to be. Yeah. Like the importance of having high self-esteem and confidence. And I would also like to um, be a consultant to help people decide like what they want to be in the future and what is right for them. So impressed. I mean, how you ladies even met in the first case? Yeah. How did you hear about sustainable development goals mm -hmm. in the first instance? Because a lot of teenagers haven't heard of that. They might not know that the career paths that you're pursuing, they might not even realize that, that these really paths exist. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to say to those kids mm -hmm. out there? Um, well, for um, me, okay. Okay, I would just like to say, before you do anything, always do your research. Mm -hmm. Watch the news. No matter how boring it's going to be, you have to watch the news. You have to be aware of what is going on in the world. You have to know what is happening around you, and not just, like, your friends. You have to know the political status of your country. You have to know the, the economic status of your country and stuff. So, and also outside of your country, like Africa as a whole, because when you go outside of Nigeria, you're not just representing your mm -hmm. family, you're representing Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has not met a Nigerian will see you and be like, okay, that's what Nigerians are. And then you, you need to know about the stereotypes so you know what not to do yes. and what to do. Well, for me, like, from a very young age, my mom has, like, exposed me to different um, activities and career workshops and everything. And also my school has played a major part. So I attended the Model United Nations with, like, I represented, I was part of the delegates from my school, mm -hmm. Temple Secondary School, um, last year. And then we were exposed to so much about the sustainable development mm -hmm. goals yes. and everything. And then we were discussing a lot of world issues. Mm -hmm. And it made me think, like, how can I play part? How can I play my own part in solving the world's problems? Because my mom has always taught me that you shouldn't always expect something. Mm. You shouldn't always think like, what can I get from here? Yeah. You should also think like, how can I contribute to society? Mm -hmm. And the world belongs to all of us, and not just the government. So we can all play our parts. And the Sustainable Development Goals they were created by the United Nations in 2012 in Rio de Janeiro. So it covers like every aspect, like from the economical to political to improving our daily lives. So if everyone can work towards a sustainable development goal, then the world will be a better place. Yes, yes um, um, for me, I think that we can make tremendous change in our in our own individual interactions with people. Like gender equality, you, um, you mustn't be doing something as as large as we are. You must not have a target as large as we have. Like, in your interaction with people, if you see someone making a comment at a woman or, like, making a comment about a certain issue, correct that, educate them. Like, some, some little interactions like that can make a huge difference. Yes, they can. Wow. I yes. am done today. I, I, I feel like so you done. guys should be behind this desk and running this show. I'm running the country. I am, I am the country. I am so impressed with just the work you guys are doing. Yeah. And yeah. Thank, thank you. Anything, anything we can do to help continue to push the push the agenda anywhere you need us to sign anywhere yeah. you need us to come please let us know this is an issue mm -hmm. that is close to our heart equity is an issue we all need to be fighting for yes. and be on the front lines but thank I mean, you we will definitely have you back on yes. um, in the future so we would love updates. to be here